All right. Well, thank you for coming tonight. And we are continuing in our series called Divine Healing. Does everyone have their Bibles, their notebooks? Maybe you have your iPads, your phones, but I want all of us looking with our eyes at the Word, taking notes. How many of you know it's important to write down? Huh? Oh, do you want it? Yeah, you can use it. Um, it's important to write down and um, to remember what God says and what He's told us. And um, there is scientific backing to writing things down, helps you remember it better. But let's pray before we get into the word. Father, we thank you so much for your word. And we thank you that you are the Lord that heals us. We thank you tonight that as your word goes forth, it ministers grace to the hearers. We thank you that we're not just hearers only, but we're doers of your word. We put it into practice. So we thank you that as your word is preached, we thank you that signs accompany and uh, fulfill your word tonight. Even tonight, we thank you, healing in bodies, healing in minds, and we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. So we're continuing in divine healing, and tonight's title is Hear and Be Healed. Hear and Be Healed, okay? So... Um, Tonight, we're kind of going to hit a couple of different things. We're going to just keep establishing. I know Mona's done a phenomenal job these past few weeks. So if you have not listened to those, um, be sure to catch up on all of those. And um, we're going to talk tonight about how faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And it's important to hear God's word. But it's not only important to hear God's word. We have to know that it is God's will for us to be healed. Amen. So we're going to establish that even more tonight, that it is God's will for healing. That wasn't a loud enough yes. How many of you know it's God's will that you walk healed and whole? And you know what? If you're not convinced of that, for some of us, it may be that we've had teaching before that's told us it's not God's will. So how does faith come to receive it? Well, first we have to know that it is God's will, but how does that come? Through the reading of God's word, through seeing in God's word what he says about himself and what he's done for us. So it could be wrong teaching. For some of us, we have been taught it, and we've maybe been taught it since we were little. But how many of you know faith doesn't come by having heard? Faith comes by hearing. So we have to keep hearing. It's just like you eat dinner, right? And last night's dinner, you can't say, well, you know, I ate last night, I'm good today. Or I ate last week, so I'm good. Or, you know, I've heard that scripture before, so that's a familiar one. I don't really need to hear that again. Well, how many of you like a steak dinner? I don't hear anyone going, I had steak back in 1975, and I'm great with that. Why? Because you have to keep eating. Your body has to keep naturally. In order to be strong, you have to keep eating. Well, the same is true with the word of God. It's not just a one and done thing. It's not just I've heard that before and I'm good in that area. It's faith comes by hearing. And why we're hitting on this is I've even noticed in my own life, in prosperity, in healing, in different areas that I know but knowing is different than having faith in something. And faith is active. And so it's, it's not enough just to know it. We have to be feeding on it so that our faith is stirred on it so that we can receive it. Because we don't get what we get from the Lord just by knowing it. It's by faith that you receive the promises of God. Okay, so we're going to hit just a little bit on um, that it, healing is God's will. And then how does he do it and how do we receive it? Okay, so we're going to talk about that. All right, so first scripture, Psalms 103, 1 through 3 says this, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgives all your iniquities? Who heals all your diseases? And you can keep going and see, if you keep reading in this passage of Scripture, there's even more benefits. But how many of you know the benefit 
isn't just singular. It's not just a benefit. It's not just salvation. Thank you, Lord, that we can be born again, made new, and when we die, we go to heaven and we spend eternity with him. Thank you, Lord. One of the greatest things there is. But how many of you know if we just get stuck there, we're not partaking of all of the benefits that Jesus has made available to us. So what does this say some of his benefits are? Who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases. So he forgives all of our iniquities. So guess what? There's no sin that is too far gone for him to say, oh, I can't forgive that. And you know what I would say? Most of us in this room probably believe that. We probably don't have as hard of a time oftentimes believing that God forgives and he can, you know, restore and he can do. But then when we get over into healing, we say, well, not all the time. But what does this say? He heals all of your diseases. You could say it like this. He heals all my diseases. He forgives all my iniquities iniquities. So is healing all your diseases just special cases? We don't know why, but sometimes he does something special. It doesn't necessarily happen to everyone. No. Heals all of your diseases. It's not enough to just believe that he can heal we have to know that it is his will. How many of you know that uh, it's not, God doesn't wish that any would perish, but that all would come what? To the knowledge of him. So it's God's will that all would come to the knowledge of him, are all coming to the knowledge of him. Have, have there been people who have passed away who have not known about him? So does that make it his will? No, it doesn't. The same is true for healing. Is it God's will that all would be healed and whole? Yes, are all walking in that. So does that make it his will? No, it doesn't. We have a choice. We have a choice to believe. How were you born again? You chose to believe and then confess on him. How do we receive our healing? The exact same way. We believe and we receive that and then we confess it out of our mouth. So it's already been provided for. When Jesus went to the scourging post, how many of you were here for Brother Keith's message, uh, I think two weeks ago? So, so good. When he went to that post, when he went there, what did he take? All. All. He took that away from us. He took all. Let's look at that. Isaiah 53, 4 through 5. It says, Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. So I want you to say it out of your mouth tonight. By his stripes, I am healed. Say it again. By his stripes, I am healed. He took that for you. He took that for me so that we wouldn't have to have it. So did he just carry part of the diseases for some lucky people? No. When he said on the cross that it is finished, did he accomplish a complete redemption, spirit, soul, and body? Yes, we have to know this. That when he said it is finished, there was complete redemption made for us, spirit, soul, and body. Did he do everything and did he complete everything? Yes, he didn't say it's partially finished. It's sort of paid for. I hope you all can somehow figure it out and maybe you're some of the lucky ones. No, what did he say? It is finished. 
So it is bought and paid for. Your sickness and disease has been fully bought and paid for. So it is his will, but we have to receive it and believe it. Okay, let's look at um, Deuteronomy 30, 19. I call heaven and earth as witnesses today against you that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life that both you and your descendants may live. So what do we see here? We have a choice to make. God doesn't force it on us. The price has been paid. Redemption has been made. Healing for our bodies has already been accomplished. But what do we have to do? We have to choose that. We have to say, I believe that and I receive that by faith. And we must make a decision that the word of God is final authority in my life. Okay, this is so foundational for every promise of God, for living life, for everything because circumstances will say otherwise other people's life circumstances will say otherwise preachers will tell you otherwise but you know what I have to go back to what does he say about himself that's why I've loved this series on I am because it's establishing in us who God says he is and what he says about himself and we have to know that. And we have to take God's word as final authority. Otherwise, we will take this person's situation and what happened over here. And we'll start to believe that more than we do what God has said. So I have to establish that God's word is his will. Period. Done. God's word is his will will and it must be final authority in my life so if I'm believing things that aren't right this is why the word is so important because if I'm believing things that aren't right but I go to the word and I see if I've been told my whole life healing's not for today God you know some he heals some he doesn't if it is thy will or he just put that on them so that they you know that cancer on them to you know teach him a lesson and grow him to be strong Where's the scripture for this? But what do we go off of? Experience. What people have said instead of going to the word to, uh, for ourselves and saying, Lord, what does your word say? And if your word is final authority in my life, then I'm going to take that and I'm going to believe it. More than any circumstances, more than anything else, I'm going to take God's word as final authority. So let's just say this tonight. He is my healer. You are the God who's healed me. So was healing a big part of Jesus's ministry? If you've read the Gospels, you know that. He went around doing good and healing all. There's that word again. Sounds like what we just read in Isaiah. All, not some, he went around doing good and healing all. So healing after healing after healing. Let's look at Luke 4, 44 um, through chapter 5, verse 1. And he was preaching in the synagogues of Galilee. So it was, as the multitude pressed about him to hear the word of God, that he stood by the lake of Gennesaret. I think that's how you say that. But I highlighted and underlined, and we're going to talk tonight. So we've shared a little bit about healing being God's will, right? But now we're going to talk about what I mentioned at the beginning. How does God do it? And how do we receive it? Because how many of you know it's not enough to just know, okay, yeah, but I have to be able to receive that. By faith, I have to receive it. So we're going to look at that. Okay, so Luke 4, uh, 44, 5 through 1. And it says, I underline this portion of scripture. It was as the multitude pressed about him to do what? Hear the word of God. 
did they come to say, I need you to pray for me and get my miracle? What first did they do? They pressed about him to do what? Just to hear what he had to say. To hear. Well, what do we know from John? That Jesus was the word and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. So Jesus is the very word of God. So what they were doing was coming to hear the very life-giving word of God. Um, let's look at Luke 5, 12 through 13. And it happened when he was in a certain city that, behold, a man who is full of leprosy saw Jesus. And he fell on his face and implored him, saying, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Then he put out his hand and touched him, saying, I am willing, be cleansed. And immediately the leprosy left him. So how many of you know that we can see in this passage of scripture, it wasn't just enough for the man to know that Jesus could heal him? Because what does it say right here? Lord, if you're willing, you can make me clean. So he had heard, obviously heard like, hey, Jesus can do this. He can, and he's been doing it, but he wasn't sure if it was his will to heal him. Why? Probably because he was tore up with condemnation and maybe sin and stuff that was going on in his life that he's like, I'm not a good enough person. I know you can, but I don't know if you will for me. And then what did Jesus tell him? He put out his hand and touched him saying, I am willing, be cleansed. And immediately the leprosy left him. So when did Jesus, all through the Gospels, when did Jesus ever have an instance where he says, ah, I won't heal you? Can anyone give me scripture and verse for that? Nowhere. So how many of you know, in order for something to be scriptural and for it to be true doctrine, you actually have to have scripture that backs it up? So this doctrine going around that healing's not for today, or if it be thy will, or he puts it on you sometimes, there's no scripture to back that up. Everyone that ever came to Jesus to be healed left healed. Everybody. So how many of you think that surely out of the crowds and masses of people that follow Jesus, we're not talking about just a few or a few hundred. We're talking about thousands upon thousands. They even say multitudes when it says multitude can mean a couple thousand. Multitudes means it could have been up to tens of thousands of people that were following Jesus. And how many of you know out of all those people, surely there could have been someone who Jesus could have used as an example to say, uh, not you today. But what does it say? The multitudes came to him and all left healed. He is the God that heals us. Luke 5, 15. We're going to look again at hearing. It says, however, the report went around concerning him all the more and great multitudes came together to do what? to hear and to be healed by him of their infirmities. So how did the news spread? Why was there multitudes upon multitudes upon multitudes of people following Jesus? How did the news spread? Because they heard about the healings and the miracles that took place. They had to hear something first. In order for faith to be present, for them to show up to where Jesus was at and to believe that he could heal them, how many of you know they had to hear some good news? They had to hear that Jesus was healing people, that people with leprosy, people with mental torment, demonic and oppressed people were being healed, healed, healed. They heard something first before they ever showed up. So the hearing of the word of God is an indispensable part of our healing. Just like hearing is an indispensable part of salvation. How is, if everyone in this room said, yes, I'm born again, I'm saved, I've accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. How did you, how did you accept him? You heard 
Someone had to preach it to you. Someone had to tell you about it. Why? Because when you hear the word of God, when you hear the good news of salvation, it has to hit your ears, and then you have to choose whether or not you're going to believe that. So just as much as hearing is a part of our salvation, hearing is also a part of our healing. We have to hear the word. If we have not heard the word on healing, we're not going to have the faith to receive it. And it doesn't mean that God didn't accomplish and that it's God's will. It just means I haven't heard it enough or heard it to the point where I have it down in me where I truly believe it enough where I can reach out and receive it. Romans 10, 14, and 15 says this, How shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach unless they are sent? And then we see there how beautiful are the feet of those who bring the good news. But what do, what do we see here? You can't believe unless you hear first. This is why getting into the word for ourselves and seeing what the word of God says for ourselves, hearing the word, speaking and declaring the word. Why? Because faith comes so that I can believe it. So they came to hear and be healed. And like we talked about right at the beginning, it's not a one-time occurrence. So divine healing starts with hearing, just like divine salvation starts with hearing. Luke 6, 17 through 18. It says, and he came down with them and stood on a level place with a crowd of his disciples and a great multitude of people from all Judea and Jerusalem and from the seacoast of Tyre and Sidon. So this is quite a lot of people who came to what? Hear him and be healed of their diseases, as well as those who were tormented with unclean spirits. And then what does it say? And they were healed. But what preceded and they were healed? They had to hear the word and believe it. So it didn't matter if it was physical healing someone was needed, needing or mental healing. How many of you know every time he fixed it? Every time. So why is it so important to hear the word? Because when we hear the word of God, faith comes. And how many of you know, faith is the way that we receive all of the benefits that Jesus purchased for us. So, like I said, it's not enough to just hear once. We must continually feed on the word of God. And I heard um, Brother Keith say this, be more interested in the hearing than you are the healing. I'm going to say that again. Be more interested in the hearing than you are the healing. Why? Because faith comes by hearing the word of God and faith is how we receive every benefit that God's given us. And, you know, sometimes we can be so focused on, I just need to receive my healing. I just need my healing. I just need my healing. And really what we should be saying is, I need to be hearing. I need to be hearing. I need to be hearing. This is why, just like what Pastor Nate talked about, why we've chosen on Wednesday nights to stick with one topic. Why? Because you hear it, and you hear it, and you hear it, and you hear it, and then what? Faith comes where you can receive it. And you know what? Sometimes it is. We receive it instantaneous. Other times, we have to hear it and hear it and hear it and know what? The word is working mightily in me. It's working in me. It's working in me. It's working in me. When we went uh, to Ramah, they had prayer and healing school, and there was amazing testimonies of healing that was taking place. Well, Why? Because the preaching of the word happened Monday through Friday, 
and anyone who is dealing with sickness or even if you weren't and you just wanted to have your faith built up on healing, you could go sit in there. And there was miracle after miracle after miracle. Why? Because they sat under the word and they heard God's will. God's will. God's will. And there was a testimony I heard um, just recently about someone in healing school. And it was an elderly gentleman. And they had basically told him he had some heart condition and there's no hope for you. You're probably going to die here within like he was like heading downhill. Could hardly breathe and... Anyways, he was at the hospital, and I don't know if it was one of the nurses or someone that worked there was like, you need to go to healing school. And he's like, okay, well, where's that at? And, and so they, sh- they showed him, and they brought him in there. And Brother Keith said he sat in his class, and he said he would breathe so loudly. He said it was almost like a distraction because he'd take huge breaths and gasp for air, and he was, like, crunched all over, and he, he couldn't even hardly sit up. And... Um, He said, but I just kept preaching the word. And he said, ironically, that day I was talking about God's word is medicine. Had just come from the hospital hearing, no hope for you, you're going to die. And his wife was there with him. And he said, by the end, he said, throughout the message, I could see he was crunched over, could hardly breathe really loud. And he said, slowly, I noticed as the message went on that his breathing started to become not as heavy. And then he said, I noticed that he wasn't sitting up all the way, but he, his head was kind of, and he was looking at me, where he wasn't doing that before. And then he said, by the end, he's kind of propped up a little more. Then by the end, he was walking out with his wife, and he said, I had, um, by the end of the message, I had, was talking to some people up front, and I was walking out to leave, and I saw this gentleman, and he said he had a big smile on his face. And he said, I got it, I got it, I got it. And Brother Keith said, I knew exactly what he was talking about, but he said, I said, what did you get? He said, I got my healing. And Brother Keith said, how did you get your healing? And he said, because you said it in, Jesus got it for me. He got it for me. And he said, as you were ministering, he said, I just kept saying, I I take that, I take that. And he said, it was just like warm all over him. And then he said, I have an appetite. I want to eat. And his wife just broke down crying, kind of like laughing, crying because he hadn't had an appetite. And they went across the street, ate Mexican, <laughs> huge meal, and no side effects. And they, he said from that day forward, he was healed of that. Well, what was that? That was a product of the word being preached, him receiving that word and taking it and saying, that's mine. But we will not receive our healing by just begging and praying and hoping that I'm going to get it. We receive our healing by knowing what God says in his word. Faith is coming so that I can receive that. Romans 10, 17 tells us this. So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So when we hear the word of God, hope begins to rise. You know what? You begin to see, you begin to see things different. When you begin to see in the word testimonies of healing, you hear people giving testimonies of healing, talking about healing. Guess what? And you're, maybe you're reading the word and you're reading through the gospels and you're seeing accounts of Jesus healing person after person. Guess what? Hope begins to rise in you. Confidence. Maybe different pictures that were plaguing your mind. You begin to see a little different. You begin to get a little pep in your step. You begin to get confident. You begin to get bold. What is that? Hope's rising. Faith's rising on the inside. And faith is a supernatural force. Hebrews 11.6 tells us this, But without faith, it's impossible to please him, for he who comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So what do we know? We can't please God without faith. And we see that all through the Gospels, Jesus actually acknowledges faith. How many of you know many times where he said, oh, you of little faith? What was he acknowledging? Little hearing, little faith. 
And how many of you know he also recognized great faith? And he commented on great faith. So faith is a supernatural force. It is a substance. The word spoken by God is supernatural power. So the faith that comes from that word is also supernatural power. And when that faith is released, that supernatural power is released. So what do we know? Where, do, where, does, uh, where does faith come from? It comes from the word of God. It comes from God himself. It's not something we muster up. You know, sometimes you can hear my faith, my faith. But really, the credit needs to go to the Lord. Because where does it come from? Him. It comes from his word. God spoke the word. If I had my Bible, I'd hold it up. That word is God's word spoken to us. It's faith. It's a supernatural force. It's a power. So when that power is released, when I read it, when I hear it, when I declare it, it's working. It's working in our minds. It's working in our bodies. How many of you know, though, wrong words can steal your faith? And it matters what you're listening to. So you know what? If I am constantly listening or feeding on things that are telling me other things than what God's word says, that actually hinders my faith. Because how many of you know faith does come by hearing? So if I'm hearing constant negativity, if I'm hearing it's not God's will to heal, if I'm hearing things like that, guess what? My faith is being built. It's just not being built the right way. So my faith's being built to what? Actually receive sickness and disease or to keep it. So we have to eat the word of God. The word makes us strong. Not just our spirit, but every part of our being. Do you know that the word of God doesn't, it makes our spirit strong, but we're a three-part being. We are a spirit. We have a soul, a mind, will, and emotions, and we live in a body. And did you know the word of God doesn't just touch your spirit? The word of God has the capability to renew your mind. Romans 12 tells us that. To renew your mind, change the way you think, affect your mind, will, and emotions, affect your body. Proverbs 4, 20 through 22 says this, My son, give attention to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart, for they are life to those who find them and health to all their flesh. So he didn't say his words are like medicine. What did he say? They are medicine. His words are medicine to all of our flesh. And you know what? It doesn't happen to everyone. It happens to those who find his words. And you know what? It's more than just locating a verse. What does it say here? Give attention to my words. Incline your ear to my saying. Do not let them depart from your eyes. What does that mean? It's, it's not God's job to keep it in front of me. It's my job to keep his word in front of me. So hearing is my part and healing is God's part. Okay, another translation, um, God's word translation says, My son, pay attention to my words. Open your ears to what I say. Do not lose sight of these things. Keep them deep within your heart because they are life to those who find them and they heal the whole body. The Young's literal translation says, My son, to my words give attention, to my sayings incline thine ear. Let them not turn aside from your eyes. Preserve them in the midst of your heart, for life they are to those finding them, and to all their flesh healing. Psalms 107.20 tells us this, He sent his word and healed them, 
and delivered them from their destructions. So the word healed them and their faith received it. Their faith was in the word. He sent his word and healed us. I'm going to say it again. He sent his word and healed us. So you know what? We have to be continually feeding on the word of God and what it says about our healing so that faith is present for us to reach out and take hold of what he's already purchased for us. So like I said before, it's not my job to figure out the healing. It's my job to put myself before his word and hear it and hear it and hear it. So I have this little book by Miss Trinitz. Um, I don't think it's one of the ones um, Mona recommended, but it's really good. God's Healing Word by Trina Hankins. I highly recommend this one, too. There's a lot of good ones. But I wanted to read a few, um, a few um, passages of Scripture here. And um, just that healing's God's will. And I'm just going to read some Scriptures out of God's Word to stir our faith up on what God says about himself. So Exodus 15, 25 and 26 says, And he cried unto the Lord, and the Lord showed him a tree, which when he had cast it into the waters, the waters were made sweet. There he made for them a statute and an ordinance, and there he, there he proved them and said, If you will diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord your God, and will do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes. I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. How many of you know this is Jehovah Rapha? Pastor Nate already talked about this. This is Jehovah Rapha, the Lord that healeth thee. This is how he introduced himself. Did you want to say something before I keep going? Yeah, um, this is really important. And it's everything she's been talking about tonight. God healed anyone that came to him for healing. Um, but he did it by his word. And I want you to read that again, this passage again, because there's many times God's word to you to bring healing to you is not about whether or not he can heal or he wants to heal. It's about you and me limiting his ability to move. When the word of God comes to a hometown, Jesus came to his hometown, but they did not honor him as the word of God. He couldn't do. So it's not enough just to hear that God is a healer or that he can and he wants to heal you. It, how I honor his word in every area of my life can very much limit his ability to heal. Because Jesus wasn't acknowledged as the King of kings and the Lord of lords, but instead was brought down to hear son of David. Oh, isn't he the carpenter's son? In other words, what he has to say, let's see what he can do. And so there's times, let's go back and I want you to read this here. Uh, again, what you just read about, um, or put that back up, put the last verse you just put up here. Um... Is that where you started, verse 25? Is that where? Okay, go ahead. Is, were you reading from here? Go ahead and read it. It says, And he cried unto the Lord, and the Lord showed him a tree, which when he had cast into the waters, the waters were made sweet. There he made for them a statute and an ordinance, and there he proved them, and said, If you will diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord your God. Well, if you'll diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord your God. There are times the Lord has told you to forgive somebody, and you won't. Healing hangs on the honor for the word. Yeah. Healing, there's, you, you might be like, I believe in God for this in my body. And the Lord's like, hey, I want you to, I, well, I don't know. It says it in his word. I'm not talking about you and I only getting something in our spirit that doesn't say, if you don't have scripture in verse for. I'm talking about, you see scripture in verse about forgiving or do you see scripture in verse and the Lord's bearing witness with your spirit about you need to make that move, but you're unwilling, unyielding 
unyielding means you're not coming under, therefore you're not honoring, and not honoring the Word of God very much can hinder your and my uh, reception of healing. Because if God's Word in this area, that maybe it's finances, maybe it's whatever, it could be anything, is not up here, then if God's Word, it's not like one place or the other. Sometimes we think we can compartmentalize the Word of God in our heart, but our heart it doesn't have compartments. Yeah, I know we have four parts of on a boom, 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 boom heart, but your my heart, when we have junk in our heart, or the, the level of God's Word and where it's honored, when there's certain parts I will and won't, you, you can't tap. You, you, you limit Him. And so as much as we say this, and, and, and a couple weeks ago, uh, Keith Moore talked about this. We say that Jesus healed everyone. Well, he really didn't. He didn't heal everyone. He healed everyone who came to him to be healed and that believed he could heal. And when someone said, I can't but help me believe, he would come. He, in other words, they would come to they would they would come under his word. He could do it. But where he couldn't do something is where people didn't honor him as that. Because otherwise, what would happen is he would be going over your will. And God never get, goes over your or my will. You, you and I are, as human beings, as created in his image and his likeness, we have free moral agency. What does that mean? We have the ability to make and to choose our own decisions, our own way. This is why it's so important for us to understand everything we choose. And this is why th th that statement, you and I have to understand the Word of God, is, is it final authority in my life? That, does that mean, uh, i got to make sure I get everything right? i got to get everything right. Oh, my gosh. The reason why everything bad happened in my life is because I'm not doing everything. And oh, my gosh, there's no hope for me. It's too hard. No. It means this, that I'm changed from one degree of glory to the next as I behold His, his Word that I do work out my salvation with fear and trembling or honor, that the working of salvation in my life comes about because of how I hold honor, fear and trembling, honor for a king, his word. Salvation is worked out or seen in my life because of how I hold his word. But if I don't hold all of his word here, then do I hold any of his word here? Because his word, so many times we think it's scripture and verse. When it's not, it's a person. John chapter 1, you can't separate them. John chapter 1, in the beginning was the word, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. I can't, the word of God is not scripture and verse, it is a person. So if I hold one piece of a word over here, down here, then I put Jesus here. It's like, it's like this, if you have a friend and, and you like everything about him, but this one thing, then in your eyes, as much as there's really great things about him, but, you know, they're kind of crooked over here, then how you hold them and how you've judged them is this. So it's really important going back, and I, this is why it's so important. I need the word. I need your word, Lord. I need your word. I need your word. And, and what she's teaching tonight, gosh, isn't this good? Like what she's, it's like, oh, I'm like, you're such anointed to teach. That's so good. I was just sitting there going, wow. But go ahead and finish this, this passage. Um, yeah. If you will, diligently hearken. That means perk up and say, okay, what was that? I need to hear this. Okay. To the voice of the Lord your God, um, and will do what she, is right in his sight. Well, you know, it's 2023. He probably didn't know the end from the beginning, you know. Um, and, and, and you know what pleases God is faith, right? So you know what we get to do to please him? Fight the fight of faith. This pleases God. Like we're, it's, like, it's like playing on the football field or the basketball court because your dad's in the stands. Like there's something about when you hear your, your dad or your, your mom going, you got it, buddy. You just play a little harder. You just, you're, you're there for, you're playing for him. He says, um, if you do the heart of the voice of God, it will do what's right in his sight. It will give ear to his commandments and keep his statutes. I'll put, anyway, keep, anyway, I'm Lord that heals thee. All right, keep reading. And okay. 
<laughs> I, ha- I had to, th- I-, I felt like this was really important because sometimes you and I can walk away and we, we, argue, we're, we walk away arguing with the word and then all of the word that was, was heard did not profit you because it wasn't mixed with faith. It was the same way the children of Israel tells us in Hebrews that the word of God was spoken, but it did not profit them. So the word of God can go forth in this place and it can profit you and not you and you sit, sat right by each other. Because you argue with the word instead of receive the word. So mix it. And so this is, it just felt like it's really important. Well, how come I, I, I believe this is will to heal. I believe this is will to heal. I believe this. I believe that. I believe that. And I hold his word on that in that place. But if you're not holding the word, the person, you can't separate one piece from the person. Then you will be hindered. And here's the deal. The Lord will show you anything that you need to know. You know? And the question is, am I willing to come under that word? Yes, sir. That's good. Okay, real quick, because um, I don't want to keep you much longer, just a few more verses. Exodus twenty three twenty five, and you shall serve the Lord your God, and he shall bless your bread and your water. What's that? Just like what Pastor Nate was talking about, your sustenance. So there's provision here, and I will take sickness away from the midst of you. So we see provision and healing right there. And the Lord, uh, Deuteronomy 7, 15, and the Lord will take away from thee all sickness and will put none of the evil diseases of Egypt, which you know, upon thee. So same thing that we saw with um, when Brother Keith taught about that um, whipping post and how he took away. He bore them for us. He took those away. Jeremiah 30, 17, for I will restore health to you and I will heal thee of your wounds, says the Lord, because they called thee an outcast. The Amplified says, for I will will restore health to you, and I will heal your wounds. Psalms 32, O Lord my God, I cried to you, and you have healed me. So let's just stand tonight, and we're going to say just a a quick uh, confession here. 3 John 2 says this, Beloved, I wish above all things that you may prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. Psalms 107.20, he sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. Okay, so we're going to say this together as a confession of faith, okay? And I want you to close your eyes, and there's nothing holy about closing your eyes. It's just a matter of closing our eyes so that we can focus on what we're saying. So I want everyone, no eyes looking at me, I want your eyes closed, and I want you focused on what you're saying And what you're speaking out of your mouth, this is faith. We believe, therefore we speak. So say this, I have faith, for I am a believer. I believe I receive my healing, and my faith makes me whole. The power that raised Christ from the dead is at work in me. My faith puts that power into active operation in my body. Disease has no chance for survival in my body. The power that raised Jesus from the dead is at work in me. That power is irresistible. It is greater than sickness and disease. That power is flowing in me and makes me whole. I believe I have received my healing. And my faith has made me whole. Thank you, Lord. Just lift your hands to him tonight and just begin to thank him with your own mouth. Loud enough where you can hear yourselves. Not quiet, not silent. Use your voice. Use your voice that he's given you to magnify him and to thank him that the healing power of God, the word is working. We thank you, Lord. The word is working in this congregation. The word is working in minds. The word is working in bodies. We thank you that you took all sickness and disease from the midst of us. We say thank you and we receive our healing. We thank you for it. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. 
And you know what? You have to believe that the word and what Jesus did on the cross is greater than sickness and disease. Don't magnify sickness. Don't magnify disease. Don't talk about it bigger than the word of God and the finished work of Jesus. It has no power over you. No power. Amen. All right. Well, we love you all. We'll see you. What? Oh, yeah, he said reminder of black dot white space. How many of you have been reminding yourselves of that? Guys, we are just like halfway through our week fast of negativity, so keep on going. You got it. Love you all. Have a good night.